Hi, my name is Amy Janssen Brennan. I'm the Assistant Director of the Recruitment and Admissions Department at the Rotterdam School of Management at Erasmus University. Uh, hi, I'm Diego. I'm Spanish and I'm studying International Business Administration here at RSM. Hi Diego, nice to meet you. I'm Karina. I'm 23, I'm German and I'm studying Strategic Management in the Masters. Yeah, nice to meet you. Can I be admitted with a GMAT score slightly lower than 600? I don't know what a GMAT is. Uh, the GMAT is a, like an admissions t uh, management admissions test that some student needs to take need to take depending on uh, where they studied and what they studied. But I'm not sure about the score because I didn't have to take one myself. Oh. Yeah, this the minimum score we require for the GMAT is uh, 600. Okay, next question. Okay. Can I be admitted if my grade point average is below the minimum requirement? Maybe you can take some exam? Um, I think the grade point average requirement is seven for all of the programs, and I think you need to have at least the minimum seven to be admitted, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, that's definitely true. You need to have a 7.0 if you have a bachelor's degree from the Netherlands, from a research university and a seven and a half if your uh, bachelor degree is from a University of Applied Science from the Netherlands. How can I calculate my GPA? I have no idea. <laughs> I had a calculator from my university, so I, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, the GPA is a, um, can be calculated, it's a weighted uh, average, so um, yeah, you don't want to be doing that in, with a calculator. You should use a, an Excel, uh, probably is the easiest way because then you can do the weighted uh, calculations. And most students submit um, a transcript with actually a pre-calculated uh, GPA. So that's the easiest thing. Then nobody has to make a calculation. Can two years of working experience compensate for my lack of business courses? No, right? No, I don't think so either. Do I need to submit recommendation letters? You don't, right? No, you just have to submit for most of the programs. It was, for me, the, uh, the grade point average and a transcript and a CV, but uh, no recommendation letters. Yeah, that's also a correct answer. And a lot of people want to know why we don't accept recommendation letters. And our answer is always, have you ever seen a bad recommendation letter? So we don't put any stock in, in, in recommendation letters. Do I get an advantage if I submit my application early? And how early is early? Yeah, right? Some programs uh, close their deadline even yeah. before the actual deadline, right? Yeah, so a lot of the programs are actually kept, and I think more so this year even than last year. So by submitting earlier, you can make sure that you get admitted to the program. And then for the SEMS program, there's like a hard deadline by when you need to apply, but that's not on a rolling admissions basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely uh, correct. Um, uh, if, you want, if you're applying for one of our capped programs, then you should apply as soon as you can because otherwise you risk that the program's full by the time you get around to submitting your application. Um, all of our programs have rolling admission with the exception of the SEMS program. And the SEMS program uh, has a fixed date admission and that the deadline for that program is the 31st of January. And the application um, season opens for all of our programs on the 1st of October. What does ERNA mean? I think it's your student number, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's how I would define it as well. If I studied my bachelor in English, am I exempt from an English test? Uh, I'm not completely sure. I'd say yes. Um, so for me, I studied uh, my bachelor's in English and I was exempt, but I also did it in the Netherlands. So sometimes the requirements are a little different then, but I am not sure about the case for other countries universities. Yeah, so um, if you've done your entire bachelor in English um, within the EU or a native English speaking country, then you are exempt from uh, taking an English test, but your entire bachelor, uh, well, a, a significant portion of your bachelor needs to be in English, so at least uh, two years. Uh, so 
there's some nuances to that. So we can find more information on that with, uh, on our website. What happens if I apply without a GMAT or TOEFL test? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm also not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that if it's part of your requirement to get admitted, you probably won't get admitted into the program if it's required. Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, if a GMAT and, uh, and an English exam, so not just a TOEFL, um, is required uh, for, for your admission, then you do need to have it in order to become admitted, but you can apply without those tests and we can assess your academic credentials. And then, um, yeah, if you uh, then hand in the these tests before the, the program closes, then we can still admit you. What happens once my application is submitted? I don't know what's the case for master's students. Uh, yeah, so once you submit your application, um, you have to wait. It goes to the admissions office and they will assess uh, whether you're, you can be accepted into the program. And then once they assess your application and there's still room in the program, then you will get a letter of acceptance. And then you need to submit your um, diploma later on for the unconditional offer. Mm -hmm. Which English test does RSM accept? I think TOEFL and IELTS, but I'm not completely sure. Yeah, so uh, definitely TOEFL um, and I think the IELTS as well, but yeah. And we also accept Cambridge exams. What is the difference between a conditional and unconditional offer? I think you receive a conditional offer if they see that you're going to meet the requirements in the future and an unconditional offer is given to you once uh, you've finished your bachelor and all the requirements you need in order to be accepted into the master. Yeah, exactly. So um, when you are accepted, you first get a uh, conditional offer and then um, it becomes unconditional once you uh, graduated from your bachelor's degree or if you already graduated prior to that once you hand in your uh, certified copy of your diploma. I can decide what master to do. Can I apply to more than one master? I don't think you can, right? No, I think you can only apply uh, to one at a time. Uh, from my experience, I applied to one, to one master and then um, I got accepted but decided I wanted to do a different one and since there was still room, I was able to tell them that I would like to switch so then they transferred me. Um, but you can't apply to more than one at a time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> So good. <laughs> yeah, they have shorter answers, but they were good. <laughs> we have well-informed students, apparently. <laughs>